Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy and I am coming to you from Eastern Nebraska where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, November 6th, 2020. This is a channel all about my crafty life and today I have crocheting and knitting to share with you all. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. You can find me online on Instagram at Noble Character Crafts, and you can also get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I am hosting a year-long make-along over on Instagram called the Make9 2020 Mal, where you can join in on the Make9 Challenge, where you choose nine projects that you would like to make in the year 2020, post a grid of those nine projects to Instagram, and then whenever you're working on a project from that list, or if you finish a project, you can post a picture of that to Instagram, including the hashtag Make92020Mal, and that will enter you to win a prize. Whips are included, all crafts are included, and you do not have to finish anything. So it's just a fun participatory make along, and I've still seen people joining in even this late in the year, so it's not too late. Um, as I've said before, even if you have nine Christmas gifts that you want to make, for example, or nine works in progress that you would like to try to finish up before the end of the year, that is perfectly fine. So please continue to join in, and I love seeing all of your all of your progress along the way. I have a prize to give away today for the Make Nine Mal, Make Nine Twenty Twenty Mal. I have a skein of Knit Picks Simply Wool in the Wilbur colorway. This is a natural yarn. It is not dyed. It's 100% eco wool. It's a bulky weight and it's 193 yards to 100 grams. I used this to make a sweater um, probably in 2019, I'm guessing. Maybe I started it in 2018, finished it up in 2019. Anyway, I have a skein that is left over. So I thought that would make a fun prize. It would be nice for a hat or something like that, I thought. And I also had an extra little notions pouch that I had made earlier this year. So I thought that would be fun to include in this giveaway as well. I've included a little shell stitch marker and it has a little charm on here that says hope. And inside I've also included a fun little bar of soap. This is, I love getting soap, handmade soap for myself. And so I thought it'd be fun to share one with you all. So this is from the company called The Hen and Her Chicks. I um, purchased it through their Etsy shop, but this is in the Love's Spell scent. So it's a really beautiful bar. And I thought that would be fun to include as well. So this prize is going to Natalia who on Instagram has the, is at Natalia, oh, I was trying to practice this beforehand, Natalia, <laughs> Natala, Natalachka, Natalachka Christensen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Natalia, but Natalia also has a podcast here on YouTube called Talia in Love, so go check that out. She makes beautiful projects and has been participating in the Make 9 2020 Mal this year, and it's been so fun to see all of your projects, Natalia. So if you would please get in contact me, with me either through Instagram or through my email and let me know your mailing address, I'll be so happy to get this little prize package off in the mail to you. So thank you so much for joining in, and everyone, please continue to join in for the rest of the year for this make along. Today I am wearing a cardigan that I made last year. This is the Sophie cardigan, which is a beautiful design by Jennifer Wood. I made this in my own hand dyed yarn, uh, DK weight. It is uh, in my fine gold colorway. So I really, really enjoy this sweater. It's, I love this golden color and I love all the cable work in this sweater. So I've already gotten, I've gotten a lot of use out of this sweater since I've made it, this cardigan. And yeah, I just really enjoy this cardigan. This was another one of those cardigans that I have made though, that I ended up having to sew up the sides because it didn't fit me very well. So this is one of the three garments that I have taken to my sewing machine to alter the size of it. But I'm really, really happy with the final result of it. 
I have a few finished objects to share with you all this episode. The first of which is this big, neat ripple pattern blanket that I crocheted using the pattern by Attic 24. And a couple of episodes ago, I showed off the Navajo diamond afghan that I finished, and I still had a ton of leftover yarn from that project, and I thought it would be enough to make another blanket, and it was. So that is what I made this blanket out of. It was completely made up of all of the leftovers from that other blanket. So I'm really so happy with how this turned out. I absolutely loved working this pattern, which is evidenced by how quickly it worked up. It is all in worsted weight, so of course that makes it pretty quick, but still it was a pretty quick project for me for a blanket. Um, so I'm just really, really happy. I think I made it in under one month. Let me see. Yeah, just under one month. I started it on the 7th of October and finished it on the 4th of November. I used an H hook, which is a five millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and stand up to show it to you in full. Here it is. So it's a nice long length. It's not super wide, but it's a nice width, I think, for, especially just for one person, but even two people could snuggle under this, I think. And I just completely used up the leftovers that I had. So I just took one skein of yarn crocheted it into this blanket until I got to the, and I didn't switch colors mid row, but I just worked up as much as I could with this skein that I had left over. I did weigh my yarn quite often so that it, so I would know if I could make it to the end of the row or not, but I just crocheted up all that I had left over and added it to the blanket in a pretty random style. And I really, really am happy with, with how this turned out. I will link in the description box all of the yarn that I put into this in case you're curious, but it was, all of it is acrylic yarn and the most of it is worsted weight. Some of it is bulky weight as well. The beautiful pumpkin pie progress keeper is marking where I was last time I recorded an episode. So this is the end that I started on and I had not worked quite halfway through the length of the blanket from the last episode, but anyway, I was able to finish the rest of the length. So it was just so enjoyable, such a easy pattern to memorize. And I could watch TV with our family and continue to work on this while we, while we watched different shows. I definitely think I will be making this pattern again. It was like I've said, just such a wonderful pattern to work up so enjoyable so mindless and I really really love the looks of the pattern so I'm really happy with that I don't know this is going to be a gift for someone but I don't know who yet I'm just going to save it until I find the right person to give it to on my last episode I mentioned the make along that Nitty Natty is hosting along with Wooly Wishes where they are collecting handmade items that they are going to be taking over to refugees from Syria that are living in Turkey. And I was so excited to participate in that make along. So last time I recorded an episode, I showed you that I was working on this clay quat toque, which is a beautiful free pattern by Tin Can Knits. And I was pretty far along in the hat last time I recorded. I had already worked all the way through the color work. So I think I I don't really remember, but I was up here in this crown part somewhere probably. I used just a few scraps of DK weight yarn. The main color is um, from an alpaca farm, I think in Wisconsin. It is called the Rolling Wood Alpaca Farm. And then the other two colors, actually the lighter orange is also a, an alpaca yarn, but, but I dyed it. It was a more of a light cream color naturally, and I dyed it. And then the other color is another yarn that I dyed that was just a little DK weight scrap that I had on hand. But I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I made the adult medium size. As is typical with Tin Can Knits patterns, it comes in a 
in all the sizes for from infants to large adult sizes. I used a US 4 3.5 millimeter needle and a US 6 4 millimeter needle for the color work. So I always go up two needle sizes for the color work because I knit color work pretty tightly. I will try it on so you can kind of see it's a really nice fitting hat I think. I don't have an overly large head circumference but it's really a nice fit for my head size but it still has room in case somebody had a larger head size I think they could wear it comfortably as well. And I think it just is such a pretty pattern. I'm so happy with how this one turned out. So this will be going off to Wooly Wishes and hopefully the recipient of this hat will really enjoy it. And I've worked up several other hats as well. <laughs> the first one I did is this cute little baby hat. It's really bright, isn't it? The sunshine is really bright this morning or this afternoon. This is another free pattern. It's called the Double Chevron Beanie by Danielle Pink but I did modify the pattern because I wanted to add in some cute little hearts. I don't know what's gonna be easier to see. Oh, that is a little easier. There we go. So I just followed her pattern for the stitch count. This is made using worsted weight. I just used, used some scraps of um, acrylic yarn that I had on hand. I used Mainstays Basic in soft pink and white. And I made the toddler size using a US 8 five millimeter needle and a US 10 six millimeter needle for the color work. So once I got to the area where she has, the original pattern has a chevron design, hence the name chevron beanie, but instead I use the hearts chart, which is a free chart that you can download on the Church Mouse Yarns website. And I just use rows five through 12 from that color work chart to add in these sweet little hearts. So that worked up really easily, really quickly. I just made it in one day, super quick, one afternoon. So that's a really easy one. I have three more hats that are all of the same pattern that are also going to be going to Wooly Wishes. And again, these were all using scraps of yarn. I made a pattern, another free pattern. This is called Yurukum Hat by Samba Knits. And it is also made using worsted weight yarn. This first one that I made, I made the medium size. I used a US 6 4 millimeter for the ribbing, which is a one by one twisted ribbing. And then I went up to a US 8 5 millimeter for the rest of the hat. The two yarns that I used for this one are Red Heart Super Saver Ombre and Scuba for this turquoise color, which as it says in the name is an ombre. So it started off with this lighter turquoise color, but as you get to the crown, you can maybe tell that the turquoise gets a bit deeper. And the contrast color I used is um, Lion Brand Heartland in jo Joshua Tree. I used the helical knitting method to stripe in these two colors of yarn. And I'm really, really happy with how this turned out too. I think those that color combination is kind of unique and fun. I think it would be really good for men or women. Same with the clay quad hat. I think that would be really good for men or women as well. I knit pretty loosely, typically. And like I said, I don't have an overly large head. So this hat turned out pretty big. I mean, it still fits me. I would still wear it comfortably, but it definitely has a lot of slouch to it. And it definitely has a lot of room around the ribbing. So it would work really well for somebody that has a larger head, um, but it still fits comfortably. So I really am happy with this pattern. It's so, I just really wanted just a simple hat pattern. So this was perfect just to get a good stitch count and length measurement and crown, just a simple crown decrease. It is knit from the ribbing up. So that worked out really well. Then I, made a second one here and I went down to the small size for this one so I could see if I could get a little better fit. And this one, again, I still had a little bit of that 
Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in the Scuba colorway. And as you can see, it's a bit darker here. So um, this is, it really kind of stayed consistent. That color didn't fade too much though as I knit this hat. I used the same needles and everything, but just went down to the small size. But for this one, as you can see, I striped in a few more colors. And for this one, I used the Very Pink Knits tutorial on doing the helical knitting method. And it is called Helix Knitting Jogless One Round Stripes tutorial. So I will link to that in the description box below as well. But you basically are working the four colors continuously in a helical type method where you're just um, you know, continuing each color in a kind of a spiral and switching out between the four different colors. I mean, in the, in the tutorial, she only uses three colors, but you can use however many colors you want as long as they're divided evenly around the hat circumference, I guess. So that one is really fun. This one, would I think it would even work for um, maybe like a, a teenager for sure or even, I think even a small child maybe, hats are kind of easily um, adaptable, but it fits my head really nicely. I love the fit of this size. So this one is super fun and worked out really well, I thought. It was really fun to work up those four different colors. So there's that one. And then the last one I made using up scraps still left over from the blankets that I've made. So these are just some more scraps, little tiny bits that were left over from the Neat Ripple blanket. So I love how this one turned out. Again, another one that would be great for men or women. And again, I made the small size for this one. So the small size only takes about 55 grams of yarn the larger size took 69 grams. But I just, this one I just used up the yarn until it ran out and then I used the Russian join method to um, attach the new little tiny ball of yarn that I had left over. But again, this is the same as the last one I showed you as far as size and fit. Oh, I love how this one fits too, it's so nice. Just a really nice fit, I think. And it still has a plenty of stretch for me too. It's not tight at all. It's just a really great fit. So those will be going off to Wooly Wishes. I'm so excited to be able to participate in that make along. And I, I have a, um, a pile of things that I've gathered from my storage that I'm also going to be sending off to them. And I think I'll go through that pile with you all if you're interested to see what I'm sending off to them at the end of the episode. So stay tuned if you'd like to see those things. On to my works in progress. My first work in progress, I'm just holding in this little wicker basket. And I am making one more. I might be able to make two more of that same hat pattern, Eurucum by Samba Knits. So again, I am just, I have a few more of these little scraps left over. So this one is going to be charcoal, black. I have some, a little bit of cream and I have the teal leftovers from the blanket that are going to be going into this and some of the fun black and white multicolored little bits but I mean I just some of these are super tiny but it's super fun to work them up into a hat like this so anyway again I'm making this small size for the ribbing I'm on a US 6 4 millimeter so I've just started the ribbing on this one and these work up so quickly I will probably have this done before I go to bed tonight. Maybe. They just work up really, really quickly. So it only takes less than a day to make a hat, which is great. This, this make along, um, that you need to mail out your things to Woolly Wishes, which is out in California by November 15th, if you would like to participate. So I do want to try to work up. I think I can, I think I can squeeze out one more adult hat and maybe I'll just put my sk stitch count down I don't know, into like, for this um, small hat, you cast on 80 stitches. So I don't know, maybe I'll go down to like 60 stitches or something like that and see if I can squeeze out a child-sized hat. We'll see. <laughs> but I do have just a few more leftovers that I am excited to work up. My next work in progress is in this beautiful bag from Tanny Casey. 
has this corduroy paisley fabric on it and it has these enamel pins from the ladies of Nice and Knit. And in here is my husband's Christmas sweater. I am making him the Artin sweater by Barocco. And it is coming along really well. I've really tried to stay focused on this project and I'm so pleased with my progress. So here it is. I love those cables. I'm so happy with how this is coming along. So this is the back piece. This pattern is knit from the bottom up in pieces and then it is seamed together. I am using Knit Picks Swish Worsted Weight in the Dusk colorway. And I just absolutely love working with this bright blue color. It is Worsted Weight 100% Fine Superwash Merino Wool. I am using US 5 3.75 millimeter needles and oh my goodness I love it so much as you can see I've already done the shaping for the sleeves and I am just working up to ten and a half inches from the armhole here at this point that's where I'm at in the pattern last time I recorded I had just started the cable work but I had noticed that I had a pretty bad row in my ribbing that was pretty, I had a lot of uneven stitches. So I ended ripping back to this point where this little stitch marker, another one from Amanda of Little Bitty Delights. It's a little cup of hot cocoa and some chocolate chip cookies. So cute. So that's where I had to rip back to. But I'm so pleased with how it's coming along. Oh, isn't it pretty? I'm just so happy with these cables. They're so much fun to work up. I've enjoyed it so much. I did make another mistake when I was just, I can't quite remember where it was. It was in this first diamond section. I had crossed one of my cables incorrectly and I tried to just ladder down to fix it, which I have been successful in doing before. I think even in this sweater, I made a mistake and was able to ladder down and fix one of my cables, but I could not. I tried doing it and I was, it was quite a few rows down and I couldn't quite tell which stitches to drop down to fix it. And I ended up dropping three different stitches to try to find the problem and I couldn't find it and it was a mess. So it wasn't that much. It was maybe an inch and a half or so that I had to rip back. But ever since then, I've been using lifelines. So I have, um, a lifeline that is inserted here and I do that about every eight rows I move my lifeline up so that I hopefully won't have to rip back or you know rip back too far again and that'll kind of save me from having to lose too much of my work so that's been working really well I I, I my favorite kind of stitch markers are these kind that are just a simple ring that is closed and is very, very smooth so that it doesn't bother me. If I, if I use a stitch marker that has something dangling on it, it really bothers me. I use them for progress keepers, those kinds of stitch markers, but actual stitch markers, I like to use just really simple rings. But when I'm using the lifeline, I need to have something that's removable. I was using the light bulb stitch markers, but those, again, they're just too big and they poke me, they bother me. When I'm knitting along, they kind of, the, the, the skinny end kind of gets in my way and it's kind of a picky thing, but it was really bothering me. And I wanted to come up with a solution for a stitch marker that was similar in shape to the ones that I like, but was removable. So I ended up making or altering these little um, earring back uh, hooks that I use for my progress keepers like on this one here I use them for my uh, stitch markers and progress keepers that I make but they come with 
uh, this little ring already attached. Can you even see that? It comes with this little ring that, you know, you attach the charms to, to make the stitch markers or progress keepers. And I wanted to get rid of that little ring. So I got, I ordered on Amazon a jewelry file and I just filed these down so that I took off that little ring and they're working out so perfectly. So that way when I put in a lifeline, it just goes right on. I can put the yarn, this little yarn that I'm using for a lifeline onto my needle. There's a little hole in the end of my needle here and I can slip it into that. And then as I'm knitting, the string, the yarn just goes in as I'm knitting. But then on the next row, that stitch marker is attached to that lifeline and I need to get it off of there so I can take them off and move them up as I'm working and they're working out so well. So I just wanted to share that <laughs> little tip. I am really pleased with how that turned out and I'm really happy with how those are working. So anyway. I, like I said, I'm hoping to make this for my husband. His birthday is on Christmas, and so we agreed that this would be a good present for him to get for his birthday slash Christmas present. He helped pick out the pattern and the yarn, so it's not a secret, thankfully, because I don't know how I would keep this large project a secret from him very easily, but I'm loving it so much. It's so much fun. So I'm, you know, pretty pretty close to finishing the back end, uh, back piece. And I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful that I'll be able to stay focused on this project to get it done for him in time for Christmas. I love it. Um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say about this one. Oh, I'm making the 50 inch circumference size for him. And it's going well. So happy with it. My next work in progress is in this adorable project bag from Trisha of Joy in the Stitches. Aren't those little guys so cute? <laughs> and this is a new cast on that I've just started. I haven't made a ton of progress on this, but this is actually the last project from my Make Nine gift list. So I'm super excited to be working through that Make Nine board that I made. All of projects that I wanted to make as gifts for people. So this is the Polaris Mittens, and it is a beautiful design by, I forgot, Rebecca Blair. And I will insert a picture here since I don't have hardly any progress on these. I've just started them. But it's a really nice, simple snowflake um, pattern that I think is beautiful. And... Here's my progress. Not too much to, uh, not too much progress here. <laughs> so nothing much to see there. But the yarn that I am using is this beautiful color. I love this color so much. This is called um, Indigo Heather, and this is Knit Picks Palette. So it is 100% 100 Peruvian Highland wool, fingering weight. And I really love using this yarn for color work mittens. Just look at the colors in that. I just love, I love the Knit Picks Heathered yarn. It's so gorgeous. I love the complexity of the colors that they blend together. I want this in a sweater. That's just so pretty. I love it so much. And the, so that's going to be the main body of the mitten. And the contrast color that I'm going to be using for the snowflakes is this, another gorgeous one. Just look at that. It's so pretty. It's got like pinks and gray and that tan color. Oh, it's just such a pretty color. This one is called Oregon Coast Heather. So I think those are going to look so pretty together. My mother-in-law, these are a Christmas gift for my mother-in-law and her winter coat is a deep purple like this. So I think they'll look really nice with her winter coat and I'm really hopeful that they will turn out to, you know, fit her nicely and that she will really enjoy them. So yeah, don't have a lot of progress there, but I'm hoping to make some progress. <laughs> we'll see. Now that I finished that blanket, I think I can focus on it. We'll see. <laughs> I have one more work in progress. 
that I've also not made a ton of progress on. It's another new cast on. It is in this cute little Japanese knot bag that my friend Tina made for me. And this is Tina's Christmas present. So I know you're watching Tina and I, I don't know if you want to keep it a surprise. I'm assuming you do. So if you would like to keep your Christmas present a surprise, can you go ahead and shut this off now? And that way we can keep it a surprise. <laughs> So I have started making another pair of socks for Tina. If you've tuned in before, maybe you have seen that I have made several socks for Tina using yarn that she got from me that I dyed, but then she gave it back to me <laughs> and asked me to make her some socks because she does not knit socks, but she really enjoys the hand knit socks that I have made for her. So this is the last skein of yarn that I have back from her. <laughs> this is my plenty colorway and it is on a uh, fingering weight 75% superwash merino 25% nylon colorway so it's just got these wonderful fall colors in it and I think actually when I first dyed this Tina came over and we kind of worked this up together if I remember right it was a long time ago though I am making the morning coffee socks by Kay Litton of Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And I've just started the patterning on these. So they start cuffed down with a one by one twisted ribbing. I'm making the medium size, which is 64 stitches on US 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. All of the needles that I use are Chowgu Red Lace. So I finished the 20 rows of one by, run, one by one twisted ribbing and it is a six row repeat and I am on, which is a super easily memorizable repeat, I can tell already. I haven't even made it through. I'm on round five of that six round repeat, but it's going to be super easy to memorize. I, um, so I'm really excited about that and I think it'll be so fun to work up with this, with this yarn. I'm excited about this new um, progress keeper or yeah, progress keeper that I got from Twill and Print. And I think it'll be perfect for this pattern because I have a hard time keeping track of which row I'm on. I usually just use a sticky, um, well, I'll just show you one of these little things. What do you call that? We call them a bookmark at our house because we use them as bookmarks a lot when I'm reading through things and I'll just stick up one of these little sticky things. Anyway, that's what I usually put on my pattern to keep track of which row I'm on. But with a six row repeat like this, it's easily memorizable. I can just use this cute little stitch marker and it has a row, a, you know, a row counter on it. So you can turn it. It just has a little dial that is not as hard as I'm making it look to turn. It turns pretty easily. It just goes from zero to nine, but it works perfectly for this pattern. So I have it on five right now, so I know I'm on row five, and yeah, that'll just work up perfectly so I don't have to stress about what row I'm on and trying to read where I'm at. I mean, I probably could figure it out if I tried, but it's just easier to have that, that uh, progress keeper on there so that I can keep track of where I'm at. So I'm super excited about that new little gadget that I got. So another project I haven't gotten very far on, but I'm super excited to work these up. Those are all of the projects that I have been working on since I last recorded. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all of those things. And as I said, I do want to just want to go through the pile of things that I've grabbed from my storage unit to donate to Wooly Wishes. So I will go through those now. The first is three pairs of these sweet little newborn baby socks. I work these up, I don't know, earlier this year, maybe, I know one of these, I know these were part of my make nine gift list as well. And they were just things that I had made up to give to anyone that I happened to know that had a new baby. And I just haven't g gifted them yet. And so I thought they would be perfect for this um, make along. 
So um, I know that these two yarns are ones that I dyed myself. They're made using fingering weight yarn. I use the pattern by Edie Ekman, which is called the Colorful Knit Baby Socks. Colorful Knit Kid Socks. So they're super easy. I think that I used a different pattern for these two pairs, but I know for this one I used the pattern by Edie Ekman, and I'm pretty sure that they're very similar in stitch count and things, so they're pretty close in size anyway. This yarn is from Desert Vista Dye Works in the, I don't know, summer? Maybe I can find that, I don't know. It was from a test knit that I did for Kay of Crazy Sock Lady Designs for her Rainbow Connection socks. Yes, it's in the spring rainbow colorway. They're made using US 1 2.25 millimeter needles and fingering weight yarn. So those three pairs will be going off to them. I have this pretty good sized blanket that I've had in my storage for years. And it's a really fun, colorful blanket that I made using, actually using the same pattern that I use for my Hexi Scrappy Afghan, which I have a tutorial for, and I can link to that in the description box below again. Um, but the one that I'm making in the tutorial is using fingering weight yarn, and this one was made using worsted weight yarn, and so I probably used an H5 millimeter hook for this. And... Yeah, I just used tons of scraps in these bright, colorful colors. I'll go ahead and stand up to show you the size of this one. So this one's not huge, but it's a nice throw size, really. It, um, yeah, it just is a nice throw size. It could maybe work for a child, even, like a child size bed, or just a throw around someone's home. So it's a really fun... Um, I think it's a really fun one. I have every once in a while a hexagon that's done in as a full hexagon using that scrap of yarn instead of bordering it in gray. Every once in a while I have one of those kinds of hexagons, but otherwise everything is bordered in this gray yarn. And this is the same shape that I'll plan on doing for my Hexi Scrappy Afghan, which I showed off on my last episode. I had mentioned that I um, was going to start making it into more of a rectangular shape. So here you can kind of see the idea of how I plan on doing the edging. So the, the top and the bottom have more of a ripple D edge here, but then the sides are pretty well straight. It just has more of a, a zigzag shape, I guess, along the edges. So hopefully um, a family will get this and enjoy it. I have a few baby blankets that I'm going to be sending over. Again, these are ones, a couple of these are ones that I've had for just years in my storage. And I use pretty bright colors, so that's probably why I haven't gifted them, just because when I'm gifting a gift for a baby gift, the really bright colors, I'm just afraid that they're going to be too bright for whoever they're going to. So that's probably why I've held on to them for so long. And so I'm hoping that... I'm not really sure how Willy Wishes distributes their items, but I'm hoping that someone who in likes these colors will pick it out. Hopefully they'll enjoy it. <laughs> so this is just a simple granny square, a really small size. So it would be kind of a little play mat for a baby, or it'd be a good blanky size, you know, for a baby to carry around. This is also using worsted weight yarn probably used an H hook, that's usually what I do. <laughs> and yeah, I just switched colors every two rounds. If you can hear the gunshots going on outside, that's my neighbor that is up the hill from us. It's actually my husband's uncle. And they're shooting clay pigeons. They do that a lot. <laughs> Here is the next one, which Again, I've had for years. I made it in super bright colors. It would be really great for a baby, but I just haven't felt comfortable gifting it, I guess, because, because of the bright colors that I chose, which is the right side. 
Oh, it's really hard to tell the right from the wrong side, which I guess is good. Oh, well. I don't remember the pattern that I used for this. I tried to look it up and I couldn't find it. But like I said, I've had this in my storage for so long. So it's just nine squares. Again, it'd be a really nice play mat. I think it's, obviously it's so bright that I was inspired to make this blanket, I remember, because of the bright colors that I had seen in a lot of baby toys because children are just kind of drawn to this, these bright colors as babies. I think that it would be really fun to use this as a play mat for a new baby. I think they would be really interested in these colors. So again, hopefully this will go to somebody that really enjoys it. This next baby blanket, I do remember I made this on, I showed this off on a few podcasts as I was making it. This is another crocheted blanket. This is the Radiant Rays blanket by Yarnspirations. And I made this using a Lion Brand yarn. I'll try to put it down below, I can't remember. It's a cotton polyester blend. And it is knit, or crocheted from the center out. It's got a really cool construction. I remember this was such a fun blanket to make. And it's a circular shaped blanket. And the neutral colors in this one would be great for boys or girls. Um, and it, the, I love the feel of this yarn. It's just really comforting, I think. So that's another one I'm going to be sending off. And then I've got a couple of shawls. Oh, and that was also worsted weight. The first one is another one that I have had in storage forever. And I just haven't gifted this probably because it has this super long fringe on the end. And again, I just wasn't sure about styling it, you know, to gift this to somebody, you gotta make sure that they would feel comfortable wearing this long fringe, I guess. But it really does make such a fun shawl. This is a pattern, I did find this one, even though I crocheted this so many years ago. I wonder, probably at least in 2016, I bet. This is a Bernat pattern. It is called Satin Sparkle Big Fringe Triangle Scarf. And it's also made using worsted weight. And yeah, it was a really simple pattern, I remember. But it's that, that long fringe on it just makes it really, really fun. And I'm hoping that a lady over in Turkey will enjoy this. <laughs> Can be worn around this way too. So it is really fun and cozy, makes it a nice scarf as well. So again, hopefully it will go to somebody that will enjoy it. <laughs> and the last shawl I have to share with you is one that I made not too long ago. It doesn't seem like, I know I've showed it off on this podcast. It is the Radiant Gradient Wrap by Mary Lynn Patrick. I made this, I finished it in January of this year. So it is made using Lion Brand Tweed Stripes in the Wildfire color. And it's a really long rectangular wrap. This is a bulky weight yarn. And yeah, this is just a really, it would make it, it's just a nice scarf or you can drape it over your shoulders and wrap up in it. So. I think that this, I'm really, I'm really happy to be sending this off to them as well because I think it'll be really cozy and wonderfully comforting for someone that receives it. So those are all of the things that I'm going to be sending over to Wooly Wishes. So excited to be participating in this make along. And yeah, if you have any things that, if you're like me and you make things and just keep them in storage for years or maybe not quite that long, but anyway, if you do have anything that you have made as gifts that you would like to gift, please uh, check out that YouTube video that explains the make along. I will link to that in the description box below and participate in that make along. It would, um, 
I just think it's so much fun to be able to gift handmade items to people that can use them and appreciate them. So super excited to be joining in on that make along. I think that's all that I have to share with you all this time. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you would like. I would appreciate that so much. I hope you all are doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.